coming from the door. No, bring the fire. Mm-hmm. Just, just watch it. See, let's use the foot and push it. <laughs> okay. okay, page two fifty three. So she's marked already. Web. And so we begin on page 253 of the prayer book, the Easter Vigil, the Service of Light. Dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night, when our Lord Jesus Christ passed from death to life, the church invites her children throughout the world to come together in vigilant prayer. This is the Passover of the Lord. We remember his death and resurrection by hearing his word and celebrating his mysteries. We are confident that we shall share his victory over death and live with him forever in God. Let us pray. Father, We share in the light of your glory, through your Son, the light of the world. Sanctify this new fire. Not yet. And inflame us with new hope. Purify our minds by this Easter celebration. And bring us one day to the the feast of eternal light. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, the preparation of the Paschal candle. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to him. And all the ages, to him be glory and power through every age, forever and ever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ our Lord guard us and keep us. Amen. Light from the fire.
the light of Christ. The light of Christ. The light of Christ. Rejoice, heavenly powers, sing choirs of angels, exalt all creation around God's throne. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. Sound the trumpet of salvation. Rejoice, O earth, in shining splendor, radiant in the brightness of your King. Christ has conquered. Glory fills you. Darkness vanishes forever. Rejoice, O Mother Church. Exalt in glory. The risen Savior shines upon you. Let this place resound with joy, echoing the mighty song of all God's people. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right that with full hearts and minds and voices we should praise you, the unseen God, Father Almighty, and your only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who has ransomed us by his death and paid for us the price of Adam's sin. For this is the Passover of that true Lamb of God, by whose blood the homes of all the faithful are hallowed and protected. This is the night when of old you saved our fathers, delivering the people of Israel, leading them dry shod through the sea. This is the night when Jesus Christ Vanquish hell and rose triumphant from the grave. This is the night when all who believe in him are freed from sin and restored to grace and holiness. Most blessed of all nights when heaven is wedded to earth and all creation reconciled to God. Therefore, Heavenly Father, in the joy of this night, Accept our sacrifice of praise, your church's solemn offering, and grant that this Easter candle may make our darkness light. For Christ the morning star has risen, never again to set, and is alive and reigns forever and ever. Amen. This evening we share in the liturgy of the word. Dear friends, let us now listen attentively to the word of God, recalling how he saved his people throughout history and in the fullness of time sent his own son to be our redeemer. I invite us now to sit as we listen to the first reading. A reading from the Word of God, written in Genesis chapter 1, reading verses 1 to chapter 2, verse 2. 
In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a doom in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the doom and separated the waters that were under the doom from the waters that were above the doom. And it was so. God called the doom sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seeds, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let the birds fly above the earth across the doom of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swam, swam and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the waters and the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seeds in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God said everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. 
and there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. The heavens and the earth were finished and all the multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed is Psalm 33. Psalm 33, page 506 and following of the prayer book. Psalm 33. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous. It is good for the just to sing praises. Sing for him a new song. Sound a fanfare with all your skill upon the trumpet. He loves righteousness and justice. The loving kindness of the Lord fills the whole earth. He gathers up the waters of the ocean as in a water skin and stores up the depths of the sea. For he spoke and it came to pass. He commanded and it stood fast. But the Lord's will stands fast forever, and the designs of his heart from age to age. The Lord looks down from heaven and beholds all the people in the world. He fashions all the hearts of them and understands all their works. The horse is a vain hope for deliverance. For all its strength it cannot save. to pluck their lives from death and to feed them in time of famine. Indeed, our heart rejoices in him, for in his holy name we put our trust. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, Almighty and Eternal God. You created all things in wonderful beauty and order. Help us now to perceive how still more wonderful is the new creation by which in the fullness of time you redeemed your people through the sacrifice of our Passover, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The second reading. A reading from the Word of God written in the book of Genesis, chapter 22, verses 1 to 18. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. 
So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father? And he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where's the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies. And by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm appointed, Psalm 16. Psalm 16, page 484 and following of the prayer book. Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. <clears throat> but those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. Okay. 
together. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God and Father of all who believe in you, you promised Abraham that he would become the father of all nations. And through the death and resurrection of Christ, you fulfill that promise. Everywhere throughout the world, you increase your chosen people. May we respond to your call by joyfully accepting your invitation to the new life of grace. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The third lesson. The third lesson, the third reading is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 14, reading from verse 10 to chapter 15, verse 1. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians, Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will, so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians sh shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers. The angel of God who was going before the Israelite army moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel, and so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians, Egyptians pursued and went to the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord, in the pillar of fire and cloud, looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their char chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, 
and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depths. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The water returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We turn to page 49, and the canticle is the Cantimus Domino, the Song of Moses. Page 49, the canticle, the Cantimus Domino, the Song of Moses. We offer together. I will sing to the Lord for his glorious triumph. The horse and the rider he has hurled into the sea. The Lord has become my strength and refuge. The Lord himself has become my savior. He is my God and I will praise him. My father's God and I will exalt him. The Lord himself is a mighty warrior. The Lord, the Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, is majestic in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Holy, awesome, worker of wonders. In steadfast love you led your people. You guided your redeemed with your great strength. You brought them in safety to your holy place and planted them firm on your own mountain. You brought them into your own house. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. I will sing to the Lord for his glorious triumph. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of steadfast love, your wonderful deeds of old shine forth even to our own day. By the power of your mighty arm, you once delivered your chosen people from slavery under Pharaoh to be a sign for us of the salvation of all nations by water of baptism. Grant that all the people of the earth may be numbered among the offspring of Abraham and rejoice in the inheritance of Israel. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We come now to the fourth lesson. A reading from the Word of God written in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 to 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, 
Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded and as I prophesied suddenly there was a noise, a rattling and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon them, upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he had commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Psalm appointed, 143, page 638 and following of the prayer book. Psalm 143. Lord, hear my prayer, and in your faithfulness heed my supplications. Answer me in your righteousness. For my enemy has sought my life. He has crushed me to the ground. He has made me live in dark places like those who are long dead. I remember the time past. I muse upon all your deeds. I consider the works of your hands. O Lord, make haste to answer me. My spirit fails me. Do not hide your face from me, or I shall be like those who go down to the pit. Deliver me from my enemies, O Lord. For I flee to you for refuge. Revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake. For your righteousness' sake, bring me out of trouble. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit.
Revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Live in God. By the Passover of your Son, you have brought us out of sin into righteousness and out of death into life. Grant to those who are sealed by your Holy Spirit the will and power to proclaim you to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The fifth lesson. Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 14 to 20. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exalt with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time. And I will save the lame and gather the outcast. And I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home. At the time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed, Psalm 98, Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. <clears throat> the Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice, and sing. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the rivers clap their hands, and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal giver of life and light, this holy night shines with the radiance of the risen Christ. Renew your church with the spirit given to us in baptism, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth and shine as a light in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The sixth lesson.
A reading from the Word of God, taken from Romans chapter 6, verses 3 to 11. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is free from sin. But if we have died with Christ, We believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed 114, 114, beginning on page 621 of the prayer book. Psalm 114. Hallelujah. When Israel came out of Egypt... The house of Jacob from a people of strange speech. Judah became God's sanctuary, and Israel his dominion. The sea beheld it and fled. Jordan turned and went back. The mountains skipped like rams, and the little hills like young sheep. What ailed you, O sea, that you fled? O Jordan, that you turn back. The mountains like the sea like land. The little hills like young sheep. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. Turn the hard rock into a pool of water, and thin stone into a growing spring. Glory to the Father and to the Son. And to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now. It shall be forever. In the middle of page 262, invite us to stand. We find the prayer. The prayer of renewal. Middle of page 262. We pray together. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up and things which had grown old are being made new and that all things are being brought to perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. From the provincial hymnal, we sing number 160, 160.
spirit, Lord, was slain. So with thee till life shall end. And vigil span. be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark, the 16th chapter beginning to read at the first verse. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early, on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. And all that had been commanded them they told briefly to those around Peter. And afterward, Jesus himself sent out to, sent out through them from east to west, the sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. This is the gospel of Christ. The Lord be with you. you. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. There is an anomaly at the start of Mark's Gospel, chapter 16. The anomaly is... Why is it that the women are going to anoint the body of Jesus? When we looked at the Passion narrative, at the end of it, and very specially John's Gospel, we're told that Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus 
took the body of Jesus. They not only took the body of Jesus after asking Herod for it, but in a very special way, John tells us that Nicodemus brought about a hundred pounds of myrrh, spices, and aloes. That was to anoint the body of Jesus. So we may need to ask ourselves, why is it that Mary, the mother of James, Mary Magdalene, and the other women went to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus. To anoint someone speaks to a term of endearment. It speaks to being precious. It speaks to being loved. It speaks to being selected and chosen to be elevated. When it is that Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea anointed the body of Jesus, it was not only to say that he was precious, but in a very special way, because his family was nowhere around, he, they felt that they had to intervene. Of course, both of them were also disciples of Jesus, albeit secretly, because they were faithful of the Jews. But all told, Jesus was already anointed. He was already prepared for burial. The tomb had been sealed. And uh, historical sources tell us that the tomb was sealed by well over 25 plus men because the stone was extremely heavy. That we will deal with at another time. But certainly, the women went there not thinking really, but at the same time thinking, asking the question, who is going to move the stone from the tomb? But that was secondary to their purpose for going. And their purpose was to anoint Jesus. I want us to ponder for a few moments what Jesus would have done for them. The mother of James, we're told she went to Jesus. And she asked Jesus, could you have my two sons, James and John, sit at your right and your left when you come into your kingdom? Both James and John were inconsequential people. They were literally nobodies. They were fishermen. But Jesus beckoned. Jesus called them. Jesus called them out of nothingness into his marvelous light to walk with him as disciples. Let's take Mary Magdalene. Certainly, the worst of the lot. Certainly, a nobody. Certainly, a street woman. But Jesus met her. And in touching her life, she was transformed. She was renewed. She was granted a new lease on life. So what we have are people who were in the depths and despair. Persons who were in the depths of depravity. At the point where they were seemingly less than everyone else. But as is always the case, when we encounter Jesus, when we encounter his love, his mercy, and his compassion, unless our hearts are hardened beyond measure, we will acknowledge him and lift him up to pride of place in our hearts and our lives. And this is why the women went to anoint the body. The body was already washed. According to Jewish custom, there was no second anointing. There was no third anointing. There was just this one anointing that would have taken place 
hours before. But because of the esteem, because of what Jesus meant to these women, they decided we have to go and look at our Lord because this is our Savior. We may even consider that they quite possibly weren't even thinking about the resurrection. It is possible that they weren't even thinking about the resurrection, but they were convinced that this was the Lord and Savior. This was life itself. And that is what God brings to us in Jesus Christ, life. He gives us hope. He gives us understanding that no matter what we're going through, all is going to be well in his kingdom. It is why that on a night like this, we can reflect how it is that from the moment that we were created, no matter how many times we fell away from God, no matter how many times that we gave up on God, he always took the initiative to draw us, to bring us back onto himself because God loves us. He manifested that by sending Jesus Christ as the babe of Bethlehem to walk for several years and eventually die on the cruel cross of Calvary. And so those women, they recognize who Jesus was as we are called to recognize who Jesus is. He is life itself. He is precious. He is the treasure of heaven. The mission praise calls it when he says, thank you for the cross. It says, the darling of heaven. I don't like the darling of heaven. I prefer the other version song. The treasure of heaven crucified. The treasure of heaven crucified. And the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir, when they sing it and they sing the treasure of heaven, my heart goes out because this is what he is. He is life itself. And you and I now are called to hold him in this precious and wonderful esteem. We must see him as our all in all and that is why Two Sundays ago, we needed to attune our minds to the fact of deciding or the point of deciding what does Christ really mean to us. In our going in and our coming and all of that, what does Christ really mean to us? The ladies saw him as life itself. That is why we are going to preserve as much as possible this precious and wonderful person whom we know. No mind the traditions that have gone and have said, well, only one anointing. We anoint because we know who this is. We know what he has done for us. And at the start of our Lenten journey, this very Jesus, he, he said to us, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Tonight, these women affirm to us this morning that this is our treasure. This is our Savior. This is our Lord. And no matter what we're going through, this God whom we serve, he is able. He has brought us through the ages. Even when Abraham did not have a sacrifice, God provided. When the children of Israel were literally dead, metaphorically dead, had no life in them, no spiritual life, the pneuma, the spirit, the charisma had disappeared from them. And God said to them in Ezekiel, can these bones live? And the prophet could not answer because the prophet knew that within himself he had no help. So hear what the prophet said. God, only you alone knows. Only God alone knows. And sometimes in our lives, when the deck is stacked against us, when everything comes against us, we know that only God alone knows because only God alone is able. 
Only God alone is able. We may stand and we may wonder, we may watch, we, watch, we may ponder, we may try to decide what is going on here. But at the end of the day, God is always in control. And so God breathes new life into them. As he breathes new life into Mary Magdalene. As he breathed new life into the other women. He made them out to be persons of worth and of value. He lifted them up. And remember, women had no worth in those days. In another rendition of the gospel. When they went and they told the disciples, told Peter, very specially John's gospel chapter 20, Peter had to run and go because he could not rely on the testimony of the women. In fact, a woman could not go to court to be a witness. Jewish history said that if a woman was ever allowed to give testimony, in court to be a witness the case became null and void that witness was thrown out but these women Jesus met them Jesus took them and Jesus gave them a ministry a ministry of which the church does not always speak but when we look through the annals of the historical witness the people who sustained the ministry of Jesus were these women. The people who made sure that Jesus could move from town to town, have a place to eat, a place to sleep. Jesus could have food and things to relax around. These were the women who made sure. And from a life of insignificance, from a life of fringe living, from a life of being less than, they were raised up. And so it is so, all of us, male or female, our God says to us, you are my child and I love you. All I'm asking you to do is to make sure that I am the one. I am precious to you. And so the question is, is he precious in our sight? Is he precious for our lives? Is he the one that is always with us, leading, guiding, directing? Or is it that we place our faith in trust in something else or someone else and then only when we need him for the celebratory or the morning moments that we go to him? The ladies found that he was their all in all. As the scripture says, in him we live, move, and have our being. And no doubt they understood that. And so they realized, this one is precious to us. In some parts of the canonical witness, there's a woman who took the nard and wiped the feet of Jesus. Some say it was the same Mary Magdalene. There are others who doubt. But then I draw back our memory to that place where... That woman gave everything. She recognized everything for Jesus. And what he's asking of us is to trust him, to walk with him, to give him everything. To always, not just for a season, but always. Because he will never leave, nor will he forsake. And he came because of us. As someone said, God in Christ became man so that he would teach us to become like God. We are worth it. He sees something in us. We are not too far gone. We cannot be too far removed that he will not extend that love. But he does and he continues to do it. He beckons us. But what is our response? Do we see him as Mary Magdalene saw him? Do we see him as the other women saw him? As life itself? Because this is what the Easter story is all about. It is about life, new life in Jesus Christ. Removing the old life. Blessed St. Paul reminds us that if anyone is in Christ, that person is a new creature. Behold, all things are passed away and all things have become new. 
a new understanding, a new outlook, a new thinking that this is life itself. And no matter what comes my way, I shall not be moved. Why? Because this is my Lord. And in the midst of even death itself, which always will remain the unconquerable theme of life. In this realm, death will always remain that unconquerable theme of life. But because we are in Jesus Christ, we have hope. The hope we have is that because Jesus was raised from the dead in the splendor of the Father, so it is we also shall be raised. Paul says, don't you know that when you are baptized in Christ, Romans 6 and verse 3, you are baptized into his death and into his resurrection. When we enter into this union with Christ, it is death to self. But it is also resurrection to a new life, a new understanding, a new outlook that says this is our king. This is our savior because he's alive and reigns forever and ever. And so he's precious. And each one of us must make that personal and individual declaration. Not necessarily for the entire world. But it first begins in that round little thing that is within our chest cavity the heart we must make the decision to say i will serve him because he is my all in all i will live for him because he is my all in all i will allow him to direct and to guide because he is my all in all and these women have set us an example they ran to the tomb just to anoint with all the spices he was anointed already but they didn't care because they realized how precious he was to them what does he mean to you how precious is he to you I believe I know how and more and more each day and each week, I'm still finding more and more to trust. More and more to rely. More and more that he is life itself and nothing else matters. Because when this mortal life shall cease and end, and death comes, but what do we have? What do we have, Christian friends? We don't have anything. But we do. If we want it. What we have. Is a life. That now speaks to the presence. And the power of almighty God. In Jesus Christ. And because we hold him. We pedestalize him. He's at the top of our totem pole. He is the one who is. The end all and be all. In fact the writer of revelation says. He's Alpha and Omega. Alpha and Omega. So we have that. So when death comes now, we are not going to worry because we know plain and simple. Death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your power to hurt? You have lost all of those. You know why? Because all that I hold precious in Jesus Christ, he has overcome it all. And one of these days, May not be tomorrow. May not be next week. May not be the next 50 years. May not be next 100 years. But listen, I don't really care. I really don't care. But know this. That when he comes. And as I said to us. A few hours ago. The little sankey. That we used to sing. When they number the ones. Who believe in him. Count me in. When they swing wide the gates to Jerusalem, count me in. Count me in, count me in. And that is the hope that we have. But it means now a life that places him 
in primary and pole position. And we allow him now, his witness, to flow through us. Because he was so precious. He was so wonderful to the women that even in the midst of their fear, hear what Mark tells us? Terror and amazement. Do you, do you know what terror is? You really don't know what terror is, you know? We, we don't have terror. We don't have terror around us. Terror is when you realize that this thing before you is immovable. This thing before you has the ability to really tear you to pieces. But they were still willing to run out and say, the Lord is risen indeed. We went to anoint him because he's precious to us. Our precious gem, our treasure is alive. What about you? What about me? Where does he stand for us? Mary Magdalene and the others, they made their choice. By their actions, they show that he is precious to them. Just maybe we need to become like them so that we could make a difference now because we realize the kind of culture in which we live. People don't want Jesus anymore. People don't want God anymore. Even for some Christians, he becomes seasonal. He becomes a sort of peace meal. And when we encourage, there's so many excuses. Another little song we used to sing, excuses, excuses, you hear them every day. The devil will supply you if from Jesus you stay away. When people come to know the Lord, the devil always loses. And so to keep them from Jesus Christ, he offers them excuses. And there are people with excuses. They can't come to church. Always something. Always something going on. No time for Jesus. Can I tell you something? Don't get caught up with them. Focus on your relationship with him. Focus on your life in him. Focus on what he means to you. And if he's precious, if he's anointed, if he's chosen, if he's set apart as Alpha and Omega, as prophet, priest, and king, then live with him as such. Walk with him each and every day because he loves you as he loves me, as he loves the world. And all that he's asking us to do is to open the door of our hearts so that he could reign supreme. The name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can I invite us to stand? And we are going to sing number 173 from the provincial hymnal, 173. Love's redeeming work is done, fought the fight, the battle won.
baptismal waters, the blessing of the baptismal waters. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I adjure you, O creature of salt, by the living God, by the true God, by the holy God, by God who commanded you to be cast by the prophet Elisha into the water to heal the barrenness thereof, that you become salt exercise for the health of believers, and that you bring to all who take of you soundness of soul and body, and let all vain imaginations, wickedness, and subtlety of the wiles of the devil, and every unclean spirit fly and depart from every place where you will be sprinkled, adjured by the name of him who shall come to judge both the quick and the dead and the world by fire. Amen. Let us pray, almighty and everlasting God. We humbly beseech you of your great and boundless mercy that it may please you of your loving kindness to bless and to hollow this creature of salt, which you have given for the use of humans. Let it be to all of them that take of it health of mind and body, and let whatever shall be touched or sprinkled with it be free from all uncleanness and from all assaults of spiritual wickedness through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, the water. I adjure thee, O creature of water, by the name of God, the Father Almighty, by the name of Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you become water exercise for the put into flight all the power of the enemy and do avail to cast out and send forth that same enemy with all his apostate angels by the power of the same our Lord Jesus Christ who shall come to judge the quick and the dead and the world by fire. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who for the salvation of humankind has ordained that the substance of water should be used in one of your foremost sacraments. Favorably regard us who call upon you and pour the power of your benediction upon this element made ready by careful cleansing that this thy creature fit for your mysteries may receive the effect of divine grace and so cast out devils and put sickness to flight, that whatever in the dwellings of your faithful people shall be sprinkled with this water, may be free from all uncleanness, and delivered from all manner of hurt. There let no spirit of pestilence abide, not any corrupting air. From there, make all the wiles of the hidden enemy depart, and if there be anything that lays snares against the safety of peace of your people, let it fly before the sprinkling of this water, so that the health of which they seek through calling upon your holy name may be protected against all things that threaten it through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be this salt and water commingled in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sanctify, Almighty God, this water with the presence of your Spirit. And we pray that wherever it be cast, your people may be sanctified and protected for life in you and against all harm and danger through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, you are the author of unconquered might, the king of the empire that cannot be overthrown, the ever-glorious conqueror, who keeps under the strength of your dominion those that are against you, who rules the region of the fierce enemy, who fights mightily against the wickedness of your foes. With fear and trembling we entreat you, O oh Lord, and we beseech you gloriously to behold this creature of salt and water and oil. Mercifully shine upon it. Hallow it with the dew of your loving kindness that wherever it is sprinkled with the invocation of your holy name, all haunting of the unclean spirits may be driven away. Far from there let the fear of the venomous serpent be cast. And wherever it shall be sprinkled, there let the presence of the Holy Spirit be guaranteed to all of us who shall ask of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. We turn now to the hymn, sorry, to page 263, page 263, the renewal of baptismal vows. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you for the gift of water. Over water, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through water, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In water, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we celebrate our fellowship in him in faith. We pray that all who have passed through the water of baptism may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Savior, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Dear friends, to the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may rise with him to new life. Now that our Lenten observance is ended, let us renew the promises we made in baptism, when we rejected Satan and all his works, and promise to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you declare and promise that you will, with the help of God, live your life in the faith of Christ into which you have been baptized? Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil and repent whenever you fall into sin? Will you be a witness in your daily life to God's saving work in Jesus Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ by loving your neighbor as yourself, remembering that every person is loved and valued by God? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I 
invite us to sit or kneel and we're going to sing number 501 from the provincial hymnal 501 i will come to the congregation sprinkling with a bit of the holy water Let us stand for the final stanza. Invite us now to let us go back to page 267 of the prayer book, page 267. Let us offer the prayer at the top of the page together. God, the creator, the rock of our salvation, has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins through Christ, Jesus Christ. May he keep us faithful to our calling now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share the peace one with the other.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let me take this opportunity to extend to one and all a blessed and glorious Christmas. Uh, <laughs> it's interesting. The other day, I actually burst out into singing a carol. I don't know what had happened, but my household looked at me like, um, are you all right? And then somebody came and put their hand under my neck to see if, um, you know, the temperature was up. But I don't know what it was, but maybe it is that I just long for Christmas. Um, let me take this opportunity to wish everyone a blessed and glorious Easter. Pray that the risen Christ may reign in your heart. And most of all, as you own him, you'll not be ashamed to proclaim him as Lord and Savior of your life. So blessed and glorious Easter to you and to your loved ones and family. By way of notices, we are at 5 o'clock. We are at St. Augustine's. I know you don't want to brave it, will you? But it's a welcome service, just in case. And then 7.15, it's at St. Andrew. And then we're here again at the Pro Cathedral at 8.15. Um, today, Sunday at 7 p.m., the St. Augustine's Chorale is inviting us once again to their uh, Easter cantata. And so we can attend only 10 U.S. dollars. If you don't have a ticket, you can pay at the door. And then tomorrow, Monday, is the luncheon. We believe all the tickets are sold, but it doesn't mean if you don't have your ticket that you can't get a lunch. You can buy on the spot. And I hope that you'll have enough food for those who pop up, those who come by. But I'm sure that they will also have a pot going there, just in case they have to put something else on the fire. But Johnny Cakes, hats, dip bag, sweet treats, a whole set of things are going to take place. And I'm going to be presumptuous and say, I believe we're going to have seating. We have some kind of seating because people are going to come and sit down and relax and so on. We can't, not everybody has the kind of bottom that can sit on those hard concrete things, you know. So you need to make sure that some chairs are there. So next door you have some, um, what do you call it, um, the schoolroom. We might be able to grab some chairs and, you know, let persons sit and relax for a while. Just don't want everybody to run and go. And drinks will be on sale, I'm told. Drinks will be on sale. So, yes, it's a wonderful time. What time do we start? <clears throat> you're all not selling this thing what time we start you're talking a secret 11.30 <laughs> a.m. is when we start okay so let us come out those who are preparing um, what they have to prepare those who are involved we thank you very much and let us make sure that we have a wonderful time I think that is all by way of notices do we have any birthday um, for today? Anyone who is not coming back at 8.15 maybe having a birthday today? Okay, no birthday. So our offertory hymn, number 169, 169 from the provincial hymnal.
Jesus resurrection. Invite us to turn to page 267, page 267, the middle of the page we find the prayer over the gifts, and then we will go to page 126 for the rest of the liturgy of the sacrament. We pray together, God of life and health. Accept the offering of your holy people and grant that he who is baptized into Christ may be perfected in your salvation. In the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give you thanks Father Almighty, everlasting God, but chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is a true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us eternal life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. 
you to sit on Neil Eucharistic Prayer B, page 135. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be pleasing and acceptable to Almighty God. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Holy and gracious Father, all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, whom you sent to share human nature, to live and to die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. We therefore bring you these gifts, and we ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who offered himself in obedience to your will, the perfect sacrifice for all humankind. On the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Whenever you eat it, you do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks to you, he blessed it. He gave it to them and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, you do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, call into mind the death your Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension his continual intercession for us in heaven, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and life-giving sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering, and grant that we who eat and drink these holy gifts may be filled with your Holy Spirit and become one body in Christ and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. May he make us a perpetual offering to you, and enable us in communion with blessed Mary, Joseph, and the whole company of heaven to share in the inheritance of your saints. With him and in him and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior's commanded and taught us, we are bold to pray. Father who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the third option for the breaking of the bread. This is the true bread which comes from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. gifts of God for the people of God. What shall we give to the Lord in return for all the blessings he has given unto us? Let us now lift up the cup of salvation as we call upon the name of the Lord saying, Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, I am not worthy thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Amen. During the administration of the Blessed Sacrament, we shall sing 607. If we need another, then we go to 604, but our first hymn, 607.
body, blood of Christ. The body, blood of Christ. The body and 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 blood of Christ. Almighty God, in a wonderful sacrament, you have left us a memorial of your passion. May we always venerate the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may perceive in ourselves the fruit of your redemption, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Joy to thee, O Queen of Heaven. Alleluia. He whom thou wast me to bear, Alleluia. As he promised, half arisen, Alleluia. Pour for us to God thy prayer. Alleluia. 
rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary, alleluia. For the Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who to the resurrection of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, did vouchsafe to give joy to the world, grant we beseech thee that through his mother, the Virgin Mary, we may obtain the joys of everlasting life through Christ our Lord. Amen. We turn now to page 267. Page 267. We find the prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. We pray together. Giver of all, we are nourished with your Easter sacraments. Fill us with the spirit of love and unite us in faith that we may be witnesses to the resurrection and show your glory to all the world in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And now the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you, remembering those whom you will love and care for now and forevermore. Amen. Our recessional hymn from the Provincial Hymnal 186, 186. of New Jerusalem, your leaders employ the Paschal victory to him in strains of holy joy. For Judah's lion's verses things crushing the serpent's head and Christ aloud to death's domain to wake the imprisoned dead. Devouring depths of hell their prey at his command restore. His ransom hosts pursue their way where Jesus goes before triumphant in his glory now to him all power is given to him in one communion bow all saints in earth and heaven And keep us evermore. All glory to the Father be, all glory to the Son, all glory. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Friends, let us now go in peace to love each other and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. Do get home safely and have a very peaceful rest.